morning all of you this is vimna from csc department today we will discuss about the wireless sensor networks the major concepts discussed here is introduction applications and differences between ad hoc and sensor networks what are the different issues and challenges in designing a sensor network and sensor network architecture sensor networks are highly distributed networks of small lightweight wireless nodes which are deployed to monitor the environmental parameters like temperature pressure and relative humidity and to build the sensors we use a technology called mums technology that is micro electro mechanical system technology this mums is very small structure fabricated with silicon integrated circuits however unlike electronic circuits these are mechanical devices The sensor network consists of the three subsystems: sensor subsystem, processing subsystem, communication subsystem. Sensor subsystem which senses the environment, processing subsystem which performs the com- local computations on sensed data. Communication system is responsible for exchanging of the messages by using neighboring sensor nodes. While individual sensors have the limited sensed region and lack of processing power and lack of energy. networking a large number of sensors which give rise to a robust reliable and accurate sensor network covering wide region the network is a fault tolerant because of many nodes sensing to the same events and the networks are nodes are collaborate with the data which leads to the sensing of environment in environment conditions the two important parameters or operations used in sensor networks are data dissemination and data gathering data dissemination is mainly used to propagate the data or query throughout the network gathering is nothing but collection collection of the observed data from individual sensor nodes to a sink sensor networks consists of the different types of sensors like thermal sensors visual infrared and seismic sensors which is used to monitor the various conditions such as temperature humidity pressure and characteristics of the objects and their motion Sensor nodes can be mainly used in military applications, in health issues, and chemical processing and disaster real life scenarios. Sensor nodes used the used in various applications, which are required to monitor the different specific events to detect the specific events. The military applications of the sensor node should include the battlefield surveillances and to monitor the intelligent missiles and to detect the attack of weapons from mass destruction. Sensor networks are also used in the environmental applications such as forest fire detection, flood detection, and exploration of the animals. Sensor networks are main in also used in the health issue health issues that is mainly used to extremely useful to diagnose the patient and monitor the patient conditions. Patient can wear the small sensor devices which monitor the physiological data such as heart rate or blood pressure. and data collected and sent throughout the network to monitor the monitor the systems and to design and give alert to the concerned doctor for detection of the anomaly such systems will provide the patients to a great freedom of movement instead of they being confined to the hospital sensor nodes are also sophisticated enough to correct identifying the allergies or to prevent the wrong diagnosis so and the main applications of the sensor networks is also used in smart cities and home appliances the next we will discuss about the differences with ad hoc networks and sensor networks ad hoc networks and wireless network sensor networks consists of the wireless nodes both ad hoc and sensor networks consists of the wireless nodes which communicate with each other the number of nodes in the sensor network can be more when compared to the ad hoc networks Sensor nodes are also prone to failure and energy drain. The battery resources are replaceable and rechargeable. Sensor nodes have the unique global identifiers and unique addressing is not always feasible in sensor networks. Whereas sensor networks are data centric, on the other hand, ad hoc networks are address centric. Data centric means the queries in sensor networks are addressed to the nodes which have the data satisfying conditions. whereas address centric means queries addressed to particular nodes specified by the unique addresses particular 
leave for nodes specified by the unique addresses for example query may be addressed to the all the nodes in southeast, uh, southeast quadrant or to all nodes which have recorded a temperature greater than 30 degrees celsius this is the example for data centric when come to address centric sensor networks require some mechanism of routing and answering the queries most routing protocols protocols used in ad hoc networks cannot be directly ported to the sensor networks because of the limitations in the memory power and processing capabilities sensor nodes and the non scalable nature of the protocols an important feature of the sensor networks is data fusion aggregation where the sensor nodes aggregated the local information before relaying main goal of the fusion is to reduce the bandwidth consumption media access delay and reduce the power consumption for communications this table describes the differences between the ad hoc networks and sensor networks the number of sensor nodes are large in quantity when compared to the ad hoc network development type used in sensor network is very much dense whereas when come to scatter when come to ad hoc networks we use the development type is scatter type and rate of failure more in wireless sensor networks and less very rare in ad hoc networks change in network topology is frequency and rare Communication mode used in sensor network is broadcast communication, whereas point-to-point -point communication is used in the ad hoc networks. Battery in sensor network is not rechargeable and not replaceable. Ad hoc networks are batteries are replaceable. Identifiers used in the sensor networks doesn't have any unique ID. We have to specify the specific unique ID in ad hoc networks. Sensor networks are data centric mode. Ad hoc networks are address centric mode. Fusion and aggregation is also possible in sensor networks and not suitable in ad hoc networks. These are the major differences between the sensor and ad hoc networks. Then next we will discuss about the issues and challenges in designing a sensor networks. Sensor networks are randomly deployed and doesn't have any regular topology. Which are deployed usually and do not require any human intervention. Setup and maintenance of the network should be entirely autonomous. Sensor networks are less infrastructure, therefore routing mechanism and maintenance of the algorithm need to be distributed. The important operation of the sensor node is energy, available energy. Sensors usually relay only on their battery for power, which in many cases cannot be recharged or replaced. The available energy at node should be considered as the major constraint for designing the protocols. And hardware design is also used in the sensor nodes to make the energy efficiency as a primary requirement. Hardware serve microcontrollers, operating system and application software should be designed to conserve the power. And sensor networks to use to synchronize the data by using TDMA schedules, time division multiplexer schedule. It can be imposed and temporal ordering to detect the events can be form performed without any ambiguity. Sensor network should be capable of adapting to changing the connectivity due to failure of the nodes or new nodes. Routing should be able to dynamically include it to avoid the sensor nodes in their paths. And real-time communication over the sensor network, it will support the maximum delay and max minimum bandwidth and other quality of service parameters. Provisions must be made for secure communication over sensor networks, especially for military applications, because which carries those very sensitive data. Next, we will discuss about the sensor network architecture. The sensor network architecture, uh, architecture or design of the sensor networks influenced by the factors like scalability, fault tolerance, and power consumption. Two basic kinds of sensor network architectures are layered architecture and clustered architecture. Before going to discuss about this architecture, we want to see the protocol stack for sensor networks. This protocol stack contains over five layers and three management planes. The first layer is application layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, physical layer and three management planes are power management plane, connection management plane and task management plane. Application layer. Application layer contains variety of applications. This layer performs the sensor network applications like query dissemination, node localization, and time synchronization, and network securities. Transport layer is responsible to transmit the data by data between the sensor nodes to sinks 
and delivery in sensor node works consists of two directions or primarily two directions first one upstream downstream upstream means sensor node transmit their data from uh, sensor data to sensor data to sink downstream means opposite sink to the sensors network layer network layer is responsible for routing the data sensed by source sensors nodes to data sink in general source node can transmit the sensed data to the sink either directly via single hop long distances wireless communication or multi hop distances data link layer is responsible for data stream multiplexing data frame creation and detection medium access and error control and data link layer provide a reliable point to point and point to multi point transmissions one of the most important function used in data link layer is mac mac is nothing but medium access control physical layer physical layer is responsible for converting the bit streams from data link layer to signals which transmission over the communication medium now we discuss about the management planes there are three management planes power management plane connection management plane and task management planes power management plane is responsible for managing the power level of sensor nodes for processing transmission sensing and reception which can be implemented by employing efficient power management mechanisms example for this is mac layer mac layer a sensor node can turn off it can transceive when there is no data to transmit and receive connection management plane is responsible for the configuration and reconfiguration of sensor nodes to establish and maintain the connectivity the network in this case of the node deployment and topology change due to the node addition node failure and node movement and so on task management plane which is responsible for task distribution among sensor nodes in a sensing region in order to improve the energy efficiency and prolong the network lifetime that uh, protocol wsn contains five layers application layer transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer and it contains three management plane power management plane connection management plane and task management plane now we will discuss about the layered architecture sensor network architecture can be described in two ways one is layered another one is clustered architecture first we will discuss about the layered architecture layered architecture has a single powerful base station layers of the sensor nodes around it corresponds to the node that have the same half count to the base station in this first one is base station bs is the base station sensor nodes and one hop layer that sensor nodes connect to the base station at first layer then we call it as one hop layer then come to the second layer these sensor nodes connecting to the base station with two hop layer by using two hop count next layer is third layer the third layer sensor nodes connected to the base station by using minimum three hop count that is three hop layer layered architecture has been used in building wireless backbones and in military sensor based infrastructure multi hop infrastructure network architecture it implemented by using multi hop infrastructure network architecture the base station acts as the access point to the wide network and nodes small nodes of the wireless backbone to provide the wireless connectivity the users of the networks are handheld devices such as pds which is communicates via small nodes to the base station that small nodes connected to the base station at first layer then we said it is a one hop count and second layer sensor nodes connected to the base station with second layer hop count similarly in military operations the base station is a data gathering and processing entity with communication link to a large network set of wireless sensor nodes accessed by handheld devices of the soldiers the advantage of this layered architecture is each node involved in the short distance so low power consumption the first sensor nodes within the first layer only second sensor nodes connect to the base station and second layer so that each node is involved only in the short distance so that we have the less power transmission to the nodes for the neighboring layers unified network protocol framework this layer architecture uses the unified network protocol framework this unpf is a set of protocols for complete implementation of the layered architecture 
This is integrates the opera three operations in protocol structure. First one is network initialization and maintenance, MAC protocol and routing protocol. Now we will discuss network initialization and maintenance of the protocol. Network in initialization protocol organizes the sensor nodes into three different layers using broadcast capabilities of the base station into different layers using broadcast capability of the base station base station can reach all nodes in a one hop communication base, base station broadcast the identifier that is id is known as cdma code on the common control channel all nodes hear this broadcast then record the broadcast base station id they send beacon signal with their own ids at their low default power levels these nodes which the base station can hear from the layer one we call it as a single hop distance from the base station so single hop count base station now broadcast the control packet with all layers in one node I one node ids all nodes send the beacon signal again the layer one node records the ids which they hear and these from layer 2 since they are in one half away from the layer 1 node. So next round the layer 1 node informs the base station of the layer and 2 nodes which is then broadcast to the entire network. First layer then come to the next layer then come to the next layer which broadcast to the entire network. In this way the layered architecture is built by successive rounds of the beacons and base station broadcast. Periodic beaconing updates neighboring information and alters the layer structure if nodes die out or move out of the range. The next concept is MAC protocol. First one is network initialization and maintenance of the protocol. The next MAC protocol. The next routing protocol. MAC protocol. Network initialization is carried out by common control channel and this initialization can be done by using TDMA receiver oriented channel DTROC data transmission receiver oriented channel MAC protocol is used this DTROC to assign or to transmit the data each node is assigned a reception channel by the base station and channel reads the same base station to avoid the collisions node schedules transmission slots for all its neighbors and broadcast the schedule this enables the collision free transmission and also it saves the energy as nodes can turn off when they are not involved in send or receive operation two steps of dtroc are channel allocation and channel scheduling channel allocation is nothing but assign the reception channels to the nodes channel scheduling is nothing but sharing of the reception channel among neighbors so the DTROC avoids the hidden terminal and exposed terminal problems by suitable channel by allocating the algorithms the last one is routing protocol downlink from the base station is by direct broadcast on the control channel the layered architecture enables multi hop data forwarding from sensor nodes to the base station the node to which a packet is to be forwarded is selected and this achieves the high network lifetime so existing ad hoc routing protocol can be simplified for the layered architecture since the only nodes of the next layer need to be maintained in the routing table. Next one is second type of the architecture is clustered architecture. Clustered architecture organizes the sensor nodes into cluster. Name itself it is cluster. So sensor nodes can be organized group together to form the clusters. And each cluster group can have the cluster head. The node in which clusters are involved are exchanges the messages with their respective cluster heads only. Cluster nodes, cluster nodes send the information to the cluster head and cluster heads send those information to the base station. Whereas base station in at most two hops, clustering can be extended to greater depths hierarchy. Here cluster, four clusters are there. Each cluster has the cluster head which is represented with circle. So cluster nodes represent their information to the cluster head. Cluster head represent this entire cluster data and information to the base station. Cluster architecture is specially useful for sensor networks because of its inherent suitability for fusion. Data gathered by all number of the cluster nodes present in the cluster and this information given to the cluster head and only resulting information need to be communicated to the base station. Cluster networks should be self-organizing and this cluster formation and election of the cluster head must be autonomous. 
and this is achieved by using the protocol called leach low energy adaptive clustering hierarchy this low energy adaptive clustering hierarchy is the protocol cluster based protocol which minimizes the energy dissipation in sensor networks it randomly select the cluster head and perform the periodic relations and high energy dissipation experienced by the cluster heads in communicating with the base station then it spread across the all nodes of the network each iteration of the cluster head is called one round this operation of the leech is split into two phases setup phase and study phase during the setup phase sensor nodes choose the random numbers between or from 0 to 1 between 0 and 1 if this is lower than the threshold for the node n then t of n the sensor node becomes a cluster head the threshold can be calculated by p by 0 power 1 minus p or into more 1 by p if n belongs to c otherwise where p is the desired percentage of the nodes and r is the current round and g is the set of nodes this threshold frequency is mainly used to choose the cluster head cluster head can be calculated by using this t of n formula this entire thing will be done at the setup phase this ensures that all sensor nodes eventually spend equal energy after selection the cluster head advertises their selection to all nodes all nodes choose their nearest cluster head when they receive the advertisement based on the signal strength this cluster head then assign the tdma schedule time division multiplexer schedule for their clusters so this is what about the cluster sensor network architectures layered architecture clustered architecture thank you